Chris Mannix is a busy man. Certainly today with the NBA trade deadline, the great uh, senior basketball writer from Sports Illustrated, his most recent article, Anthony Davis's trade demand and the plight of the small market teams. Chris, good morning. Thanks for joining us. What's happening, Dan? Well, I'm curious, and that's why we're having you on, of the last 24 hours and the next, uh, you know, six, seven, eight hours. What, what has happened? What could happen? Well, I mean, there are almost two sort of you know, separate tracks. One is kind of the Anthony Davis one. And it, it, you look, I have, I've been writing for the last couple of days, and nothing I was told last night has changed my, my take on it. The, the Pelicans don't want to do an Anthony Davis deal before the deadline. Um, they, they really never have. Uh, there are legitimate reasons for it. Um, you know, the, the idea of getting Boston involved and their offer in the mix, even if it's just as leverage, seeing the draft play out and who gets that number one pick and if that pick is somehow in play, just to, to a lot of people inside that organization, high-ranking people, it never made a lot of sense to do a deal. The, the personal side of it is that the Pelicans, some members of the organization, in the front office anyway, they don't like how this has all gone down. Uh, they knew that at the end of this season, they were probably going to have to find a deal for Anthony Davis. He was going to reject their uh, long-term contract extension. They knew that was most likely and when he did that, it would effectively force them to make a deal uh, involving him. They don't like how this all became public and, and became a transparent attempt to get him to the Lakers. So not only do they not want to do a deal for the reasons I just have enumerated, they also don't want to do anything to, to help out uh, Anthony Davis and the people in his camp. Okay, there's two ways to look at this. You may not want to help out the Lakers. You may not like that they embarrassed you. You may not like that Anthony Davis is ready to walk out with a year and a half left on his contract. But the Pelicans have to make a, a deal that may decide if the Pelicans stay in New Orleans. I mean, I feel like these small market teams, as you talked about, I mean, this is really important for the future of this franchise here. Is this deal with the Lakers that they're offering everybody – is it a good deal for them, no matter what the other drama is involved? No, it's it's not. Why? Um, it, well, I'm, for starters, if you survey the landscape and you look at the best potential player that could be involved in a deal, it's obviously Jason Tatum. And if you survey the landscape – and you look at the best potential draft pick package that you can get back in return, it's obviously what Boston has because the Celtics will not only talk to them about their picks, certainly uh, the Memphis pick that could be an extraordinarily valuable pick in the next two years is in the mix. The Sacramento Kings pick this, this coming year, which could in probably middle of the first round, is going to be in the mix. The Lakers, they can only offer their draft picks back in return. And, you know, Brandon Ingram is a good player. Lonzo Ball is a good player. Kyle Kuzma is a good player. I just don't think, and nobody I've talked to across the league thinks either, Dan, that any of those players rises to the level of Jason Tatum. So mm -hmm. if that Boston deal headlined by Jason Tatum is a possibility, why wouldn't you wait a few months, deal with a few months of discomfort of maybe having Anthony Davis sit out um, to to get that deal on the table. Yeah, I'm with you on that. That's why I said I would I would not acquiesce to the Lakers and you know their desperation to make this happen by the end of today. I would wait. You got time on your hands. You got Davis still under contract. Just see if there's somebody else out there who's going to you know rise to the occasion. And you know maybe it's New York. Maybe it's you know throw out another team there. But I I'm just yeah. curious. It, it, it feels like why are the Lakers feeling desperate here? Well, they have very good reason to feel that way because if you get into the summer, this summer, right, there isn't a free agent out there, a top-tier guy, that, to my understanding, has the Lakers ranked as their number one destination. Uh, it, it could change, and, and a lot can change in months, but, you know, Kawhi Leonard, it, it certainly feels like it's Toronto and the Clippers. Yeah. Um, Kevin Durant's... You know, we, we've talked about this before, but Kevin Durant, if he wins a championship this year, 
his mindset is going to be, I'm not going to team up with LeBron James. I'm going to compete with him for championships. I don't think, I don't see him teaming up with LeBron in LA. Jimmy Butler's going to go where the money is. Uh, and that's Philadelphia. Kemba Walker's going to go where the money is. That's either, uh, that could be somewhere else, but most likely in Charlotte. So if the Lakers go through this year, they may not get anybody this next off season. And then you have to look at the summer of 2020 wow. and LeBron's going to be 36 years old. Yeah. So you have to start. This isn't like Miami. The clock is ticking on LeBron's productive years. So not getting Anthony Davis now may, be, may mean they may not get anybody of importance until the summer of 2020. Talking to Chris Mannix, the Sports Illustrated senior writer, uh, LeBron not joining the team on the bench. Uh, you know, five, six seats down. You know, it, it looks horrible. But, yeah, what, 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 you know, is there more to this or is it just a picture? I don't know enough about the specific optics, Dan, but I did talk to somebody very familiar with that organization a couple of nights ago. And one thing he said was that the Lakers better make this deal because it's getting – very negative out there. And, and you heard the, the chants in the crowd in Indiana. And the, the message coming from this person was that, you know, the, the way these young guys are seeing this is that LeBron comes in and all this talk about how LeBron is going to elevate these guys. He'll, you know, they'll develop, they'll become a championship team yeah. before the all-star break. The, 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 the feeling is whether you want to think it's, it's whether it's that way or not, but the feeling is that LeBron is trying to trade them because we know <laughs> that Rich Paul is the agent of LeBron James and Anthony Davis. And, you know, I, I don't think that, you know, Anthony Davis runs everything by LeBron James, but I would imagine that, you know, Rich Paul has kept LeBron James in the loop on all this. And they have to know, it, like I said, it's a transparent attempt to get uh, Anthony Davis to the Lakers. And to get him there, if you're just connecting dots, all the young <laughs> players got to go. So, oh. I mean... These guys, these, like Dan, these guys are starting kind of their own careers. They, they're trying to, 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 to make their own mark in the NBA, and the message they're basically getting and interpreting is that LeBron doesn't want us here. So uh, this has a chance. And, you know, we, 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 made some, we talked in the, uh, the preseason. I used the word combustible to describe that team. We're kind of barreling towards that, that moment, um, if they get past the deadline with no deal. Yeah. You know, it'd be great if the players moved away from LeBron on the bench for one game and instead of the other way around. They just seceded from the union. Did want to ask you before I let you go, uh, Kevin Durant's comments about the article in The Athletic. Um, do you think that Golden State knows what uh, Kevin Durant's going to do in the offseason? No, and, and I've had this conversation. Look, they're kind of bracing for the worst-case scenario but they're going to come out and, and recruit him. You know, they're going to be aggressive in, in trying to retain him. Uh, but they're, they're bracing for it. They've got backup plans. I mean, the, the Durant stuff was just I – don't, I don't really know what to make of it half the time. With, with some of the reactions Kevin has to certain things. I mean, Kevin Durant has given himself a tremendous amount of power by signing these one-year contracts. He has been able to dictate – you know, what he does, certainly, and he's been able to have that power over organizations that are over the, the Warriors over the last few years. But the fallout from that is if you sign one year contracts, you're going to have people ask the, you know, all during the season, where are you going to go next? Yeah. So you can't have your cake and eat it, too. If you sign short term deals, you have to deal with the, with the questions that come with it. Uh I like the Sixers getting Tobias Harris. I, I really like I, I like him as a player. Um, I, I know it might be short term uh, and Jerry West. I don't know what he's doing, but you know what? When the mad scientist gets into his lab, you know, something comes out of there. Uh, explain that deal on both ends. Do you like it? I, I do like it on both ends. Um, you know, for the Clippers, they probably weren't going to re-sign Tobias Harris anyway. They made him an $80 million offer this past offseason. He rejected it, and he's played so well that he's going to be worth a lot more on the open market. And we know what their plan is. They're trying to open up as much cap space as possible uh, to get Kawhi Leonard and maybe somebody else uh, in the offseason. So flipping a guy they weren't going to re-sign gets them two first-round picks. And really, it's three, Dan, because by trading Tobias, it effectively guarantees they'll miss the playoffs, yeah. and they keep their pick. If, it, if they miss the playoffs, it won't transfer – uh, over to Boston. I like the the deal from 
Philly's vantage point as well. But I think there's got to be another shoe to drop. I mean, Tobias Harris took 16 shots a game and averaged 20 points with the Clippers. How is he going to adjust in 2025 games to a significantly reduced role? Jimmy Butler's had his bumps along the way. Now you add Tobias Harris in the mix. Over the next, what is it, five hours now, four and a half hours, I'm really interested to see if the Sixers deal Markel Fultz because teams have called and tried to get their hands on him, and you'll have to sell low to deal him now. You're not going to get dollar-for-dollar value. But what you can get back is a Terrence Ross type from Orlando. Uh, not Trevor Reza, because I think they're going to keep in Washington, but a Trevor Reza type. Maybe somebody like Kent Bazemore in Atlanta, somebody off the Phoenix Suns. They can get a sixth, seventh, or eighth man for Markel Fultz. Um, I, I think that, that that's being something being strongly considered within the Sixers organization. A potential bombshell today would be what? Uh... I mean, I guess they wouldn't call them bombshells if we don't know about them. But this, I mean, it, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of activity in Memphis right now. They've got a you know a half dozen or more offers on the table for both Mike Conley and Marcus Saul. I, I, I mentioned Orlando because pretty much everybody but uh, but uh, Jonathan Isaac and Mo Bamba is available down there, and the guys that are available can be difference making players. So I think you can see, especially in the Eastern Conference. Some contenders make moves that may not be bombshells per se, but but really upgrade them uh, for what's going to be a tough playoffs. Thank you, bud. I know you got a busy day. We appreciate your time as always, Chris. You got it, Dan. That's Chris Mannix, senior uh, writer covering the NBA for Sports Illustrated. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.